Now, an important thing to notice um, recently, I actually had to rewrite most of my slides this week because sites change. And this is what we need to realise, that pages actually, we don't control what they do. If Twitter wants to change something, they'll change it. If Facebook wants to change something, they'll do it. Do they give us notice? Maybe they will. But with these ones right here, most of us probably didn't know about them. So Facebook Lite. Now, Facebook has become very bloated. There's been too many applications. They've had too much. Um, it's become too complex. As a new user, do you actually know what you're actually signing up to Facebook is? It's, it's too complex. So Facebook Lite, Facebook's come up and said, OK, we'll make it easy. We'll strip everything out that's not important, and we'll say we'll give you a simple, nice, clean site. And that's Facebook Lite. The other important thing to, and this is why Twitter and Facebook go sort of together in the presentation, is because Facebook's actually becoming a lot like Twitter in terms of tagging content, in terms of tagging other people in your, your comments. Um, this came out on, I think it was Monday, saying, OK, if you just type an at symbol like you in your Twitter, it would automatically give you a drop down of the, your users in your, uh, in your profile and automatically tag them straight away. Now, I know for me, when I use a tweet deck or Twitter myself, I can never remember what someone's username handle is, never. I absolutely, unless I've written it down or um, I've, I've talked to this person quite a bit, I, I forget. And if you've got um, thousands of followers, you forget which one's which. So this is great to see that uh, we're using technology in a way which is improving the usability of these sites. So I get a lot of questions saying, okay, Thomas, you do a lot with Facebook and Twitter. How do I post content? Well, easy. Again, three different ways. You can do it manually, where you need to log into your profile, and that can be quite tedious. It can be quite bland. Again, to actually create a profile and, and to get readership and, and to have people apply, you need to find friends. Now, that's good and say, but if you've got no friends, like, you know, I've got no friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's going to go on the Twitter right now. How many people are writing? Tom's got no friends. You know? But seriously, if you're a new company about to sign up to Twitter or Facebook, you've got no friends straight away. You've got no one. Who wants to be a friend of a, of a job board or a recruitment agency? Does anyone want it? No, I can see no hands go up. <laughs> but why would a candidate want to become a friend of a job board or a recruitment agency? Sometimes you've got to think, okay, do they want other people to know that they're looking for a job? Maybe they can find someone to help them. Maybe not. So when we think of posting jobs to Facebook and actually connecting with the use on there, it's, it's definitely not about posting. It's about engaging with the users. And although we can post to different places, we know we can post directly to someone's profile, we can post to their page, their group, we can use groups to do this recruitment, we can create applications, Again, you're going to need the developer to create an application because it can get complex in terms of the programming. But the easiest way is just post it straight to the marketplace, like a job board. Now, uh, Laura talked before about creating uh, ads because we can use social sites in, in different ways. Now, I've got some little examples. A lot of uh, employers are using social ads to target candidates because of the precision targeting. So we can actually go in there and say, okay, I'm looking for someone who used to work at such and such, or someone who knows such and such. So I want to directly target or headhunt these people. So companies are using it quite effectively. Um, again, it does cost a bit. You're going to pay per click, or you're going to pay per view. Uh, view it depends what you're doing. But again, we're using it, and a lot are using it. Again, sorry, if we're going to use these sites, I definitely say we use it for headhunting. That's what we're going to use it for. We want to connect with people. We want to find out who's worked for who. We want to see where they've worked. We want to see what they're up to right now. And this is why we need to use these sites carefully. And when we're going to go into them individually, what are the aspects where we're going to look? Well, easy. Number one, you've got the top search bar. You can go straight in there and say, OK, I'm just going to do a normal search like in Google. The other one you can go in there is you can go, OK, I'm going to search by someone's name. I know their name. I used to go to school with them. I used to work with them. Uh, and then you've got classmate search against school university, and then organisation. Okay, this is the best one. How many times have recruiters gone, oh, we've got a specific project, and we need this specific skill, and you can only find the skill from this company. This is where it's going to become very important to say, okay, we'll target that company. We'll target that company with special ads, and we'll say, okay, we really want you to work for us. 
But again, we're going to do it in three different ways. We're going to go, one, we're going to target them with ads or something. Then we're going to add them as friends. We're going to try engaging the user. Hey, I saw you're looking for a, a, a new job. Hey, I, I saw you used to work here. Who do you know here? Who can you help us with? And we're just changing the recruitment landscape. The other way is our Facebook's going to break directory. And uh, there's, I think Facebook's got 300 million users. I think the, the number came out the other day. It's quite hard to go through three, 300 million. <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, but again, it's just a directory. So you've got people pages, applications, and groups. Now I'll talk before about the marketplace. A lot of people don't know about the marketplace. It's quite um, hidden away in the little corner, tucked down the bottom left-hand corner. This is where I see Facebook drops. Sometimes I don't want to see, this is coming from me, I don't really want to see every time my feed comes up. Facebook is my personal space. It's my personal space. I'm not using it with, with recruitment. I'm using it as my friends. If I'm on there, am I really looking for a job? Am I really trying to connect with someone? We think this, and we've got to think of it in a marketing way. Okay, which well, is easy. We'll post it somewhere. If they're looking for it, we'll post it in there. Lots of people are using these sites. We need to realise it could be competitors, it could be direct organisations, um, could be universities. We're all using it. We've used it for a while. This is not new. This has been going on for years. Where Facebook's been around for a number of years. Um, I started creating applications uh, uh, pretty about more than 12 months. I think we're coming up two years now. I think applications have been around that long. Maybe 2007. Yeah, they've been around a while. And when I started developing applications, you know, easy job search ones and you know, one click. It wasn't about, okay, these would be great and they'll be huge, but it's actually targeting your niche and working with what your users want to find out. Okay, it might sound a bit weird and, and, and wanky and, and go, oh yeah, okay, do we really need to use this? But again, we need to embrace it. We need to create groups or events or, or different types of pages for people to converse. People want to talk. You know, we're curious creatures. Like I keep seeing that seek out all the time, you know. People are curious and it's got something like that. But again, people want to see what others are up to. <coughs> we need to be interactive. It needs to be fun. We want to engage with these users. We want to make sure that if we're recruiting for a role or we're showing a role or we're trying to use this for branding, that this is important to work for us because we're fun, we're exciting, um, and we're evolving. We understand these networks. We understand why you need to use Facebook at work because you need to connect. <coughs> you know, you're not working nine to five. Your friends might be working during the day, but again, at lunch, they're on Twitter or Facebook doing something. We need to let people use their sites and let them evolve. Now, before I talk about done, now, I copied this out just before out of the, um, uh, the developers back end. I have a developer account. And how many of us here realize that every time you add an application or a you connect with Facebook Connect, your data is going somewhere? Hands up. No? So let's look at some things which you can actually get. Okay, we all think we can get our username and first name and last name, but if we think more widely, anything you put on your profile or anything you post to these sites can be collected. Everything. How you collect it and how you use it is up to you. And these sites are going to be changing soon. I'm sure it is privacy. We've had Canada come out and say these restrictions and we need to put some sort of uh, protocols in place because users don't realise that their data is going somewhere. You know, if we talk about this two, uh, a year ago, everyone was collecting data. Do we, did we know that as, as users of these sites? No. The average Joe Blow wouldn't actually realise that, okay, they put their relationship status and then and then a, a, a matchmaking site will come up to them. Same here in recruitment. You know, we can put our, our company name, where we worked, what we did there. We think of the data we put into LinkedIn, the same as uh, what we're going to put into Facebook. We can collect anything. If you can see some of the things here, you'd be worried, very worried. 